All righty, all righty, all righty. We're going to talk about the big boy money games. How to lend money from one company to another and write it off. This is rich folks logic. Let's, let me go ahead and tell you about what's up with this check. I had a really good month last month and I put close to $40,000 in the capital account of the holding company and I made a decision to add some more money to that account and down here in the, you don't see it but that check says loan. So what I'm doing is I'm acting as my own bank in creating non-taxable events. Because if, you, if this is your first time here and you didn't know, this is Glendon Cameron, your hustling godfather. We do things a little differently here. We try to educate people on the power of entrepreneurship. And it is the power of entrepreneurship that is giving you the money to invest in real estate on a cash basis. I'll be able to fund my own deals. I'm probably going to pull the trigger either next month, probably next month, or if I find a really good deal this month. So this is the story behind this account. What I've been doing is lending money from this up and running company, Mac Daddy Media, and I've been putting the money in a capital account, seeding the capital account at Disruptive Asset Holdings. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a non-taxable event because this money is borrowed from another company. So I'm not going to pay taxes on this money <clears throat> or I'm not even going to have to pay taxes on the real estate. And this is one of the games that rich people play. This is the game. Because any conversation that about money, estate planning, wealth development, that doesn't take into consideration taxes is incomplete. So this is what I'm doing. So that account which I just really started putting money into just a few months ago. It's all close to 200K. So I should be able to get me a nice property for that. And, you know, because as I was doing it, I was like, okay, how do we do this where we get a positive situation? Because, you know, when I set up the account, the way I wrote up the articles of organization. Oh, speaking of that. Hold on a second. Below this stream are payment plans for the Hustlers LLC, the Art of Holding, and some other courses. And the Money Management course is $50 six pay payment plan. So for those of you who want to get in on some courses and your money a little funny, I got you. You can go in there. It's just like driving the car. You get to drive the car while you still pay for it. All those links are below. So uh, there is no expiration date. I will say that whenever I offer a sale and you're on the payment plan, you can't get the payment plan and the sale price. You can't get both. I'm a nice guy, but I ain't that crazy. So this is how it's going to go. Just to let you know, those links are below. So this is one of the games that, you know, rich folks do. They'll create a living trust. They'll create an LLC structure or a limited partnership and lend money from one partnership to another. And also getting into the real estate game. I'm going to have to get myself some, some real estate for depreciation purposes because if I do this correctly, 
I'm not going to have to pay any taxes on this, this money for a long, long time. I'm talking about a long, long, long time. So one of the things that, you know, this is why I keep telling you guys, you, you got to go ahead and get yourself a company up and running so you can play these games. Because th this is perfectly, because when you start a company, when you put together a company, you can do whatever you want. You could call it whatever you want. You could put money wherever you want. Long as it's a, for a legal, you know, legal purposes, long as you ain't doing anything uh, illegal, you can do what you want. You could set your kids up. You could give up to $14,000 a year away without paying any taxes on it. So there's a lot of things that are, that, that are behind this because one of the things that I want to show you guys is once you get to a multi-company situation, you can loan money from one company to another and create yourself non-taxable events. But the companies need to be making money. This money got to be coming in there, man. That, that's what's got to happen. If there ain't no money coming in there. You can't, do, you can't play this game. So, apparently I did not save that. Let's go here. Aha, okay. Here we go. So this is what I'm thinking about because I'm going to offer them 185000 and see what they do. Uh, this would be for a rental. Now, if I can get it for one eighty five and rent it out for $2,000 a month, I'm getting 10% on my money. 10%, my $185,000 is making me 10% per year, which would be $24,000. So that's, you know, 10%. And once I get to raise rent, my percentages even keep, they, keep, they get to go up. Over time, the cash flow situation is going to pay me a greater return. So this is what I'm looking at. And, you know, one of the things, you know, just a little hint, when you're looking at this stuff, you want to go ahead and go back to the property record and see what they paid for this property. Because that will tell you how much wiggle room, because the thing is, they didn't, I, unless it was tore up from the floor, but they didn't have to put a lot of money in there. So they got it for 89000 and they put 30000 in there. So at one eighty five, they still make money. They still make a lot of money. You know, not as much as two fifteen. But one of the things is everybody is swinging for the face fences with these prices. And, you know, I'm like, I ain't paying that. So... We will see how this goes because I'm going to watch this and I'm going to go check it out this week. But this is how you play the game. This is how you play the game. Because with real estate, you can set it up where you pay absolutely no taxes once you have enough property with depreciation. 
That's a beautiful thing, man. That's a beautiful, beautiful thing. So, we're going to be talking about some more boss moves. <clears throat> What's up, Tiger Shark? Been the bartender. Can't play the money game with no money. Absolutely. Anthony Justin, I'm making money hand over fist on eBay. My goodness. I'm about to parlay this bread into something crazy. Just stay tuned. All right, all right. Got to deduct yearly property taxes, property insurance for that from about 24k well see the thing is since i'm gonna pay cash for the property until that property's rent exceeds the purchase price i don't have to pay taxes on that money and once again i'm looking at doing an airbnb situation which would give me maybe 30 35 percent on my money which is insane when you think about it because at those uh returns it'll be four three to four years maybe five years before i get that whole hundred and eighty five thousand dollars back and then i gotta start paying taxes so <clears throat> it's very interesting it's very very interesting but essentially you got to get some money coming into one of your companies So part of this whole deal is because, you know, as I do this real estate journey, I'm going to film, I'm going to document the whole process, you know, let you hear the conversations with the agents and stuff, because one of the big issues that I've been having when putting this together is a lot of these condos do not allow rentals. And that's why I'm going to have to get a house. And this, I don't know, this house isn't really near anything. It's a great rental property. It's a nice house, looks good, got a nice open design. So I, renting it won't be a problem. But Airbnb in it could be. So I may, you know, because I like the house. And if I go ahead and get myself a renter in there, because this is another thing about the money game. You got to start participating in the money game as soon as possible, because if I go ahead and get that property locked down by October, then that starts my real estate clock, because probably in three months, I want to get another property. So to stay on schedule. So the sooner I start this, the more money, because if I got three properties doing like, you know, two thousand dollars a month. Six thousand dollars a month, seventy-two grand a year. It's ten percent on my money, or eleven or twelve percent. Just depends. I've been pitching you to my cousin. I'm trying to stop him from hitting the hotel blunt. That's funny. Yeah, I mean, you still got to pay property taxes, but I'm talking about income taxes. Property taxes on that. Mm -mm. Property taxes on that are not going to be 24 and not even with insurance. We're talking about maybe 6,000 for all that. So no, that 24K is way too high. Boys walking hotel blunt, that's, that's crazy. So, you know, this is just one of the perks that you get to give yourself. Because when you start a business and when you start to serve other people and you start putting money out there 
and you start getting money come in, you can do so many things. You could do so many things. Like it's crazy what you can do. Because uh, one of the things is like uh, my mom's got 15K in the bank and she wants to do real estate. Well, with 15K, she can buy one house and put that 15K down and get a loan. She could do that. It's, um, you know, if that's what she wants to do, Quentin. Because one of the big barriers, and this is, you know, my, when I started out this business, my goal was to help as many people as possible. And with that came a lot of money. The more people that I help, the more people that I serve, the more products that I put out, the more money that I make. So this gives me the ability to switch things up like you wouldn't believe. It gives me the ability to make power moves because, you know, once again, you got to manage your money. In the basic money management course, now you have a six pay option. Links below. You can make six payments and you can go ahead and get all the benefits while you're you're learning. Just like driving the car with a car payment. But, you know, because as I was sitting back and I was looking at, because I'm setting this up and I'm structuring it for the future. This is like a 10 year plan. So what I'm going to do for the next 10 years is take income from Mag Daddy Media, move it over to this as the holding company. And from the holding company, I'm going to write a check, write a physical check from the holding company to the operating company for that house. Because the operating company is going to be on QuickBooks. It's going to manage the house finances, manage the rent payments. I'm going to have a special escrow account for security deposits. So the security deposit will go straight into the bank. Airbnb automated is the channel. You know, once again, um, I, I know some people who've been doing Airbnb. And the big deal is location, location, location. I know someone that has a small little apartment that does 10K per month. Two bedroom apartment. So it's, it's really a matter of getting the right properties in the right places. Because uh, there's a lot of stuff on Airbnb. And, the, you know, these guys are saying stuff. But. Unless the guy's just, you know, someone has a property and they don't want to be a landlord or they don't want to deal with that. Because, you know, there is a, a hassle factor with Airbnb. Once they leave, you got to get the place clean. You got to make sure that it look, still looks good. And a lot of people don't want to do that, even though the money could be sick. But we will see. But once you start a company and you start one profitable company, you could create another company that loses money intentionally to offset the gains. And when I say lose money, like, like, all right, here's a little secret with these payment plans. Uh, for the most part, most people finish up the payment plan. So thank you. But I get a group of people who will bail. They'll just stop paying. Their credit card doesn't work. That's a loss, baby. That's a loss, man. I didn't get my money, so I lost money for federal tax purposes. So you could create a company that has paper losses to offset your company making money. Because this is one of the reasons I'm getting in real estate because of the appreciation factor. So that's going to be a huge part of as I put this together. Because this is one of the things that no one ever talks about. For you to get wealthy, you got to manage your taxes. You got to manage your taxes. 
For most people, taxes are the biggest expense they have next to rent or a mortgage. Think about that. You know, look at your check. What does your W-2 say? How much is FICA, federal, how much money are they taking from you? That's money that you could be using to get wealthy. So you want to keep that money back in house. And this is one of the reasons, because what I'm doing is this money is a loan from Mac Daddy Media to Disruptive Asset Holdings. So the loan has to be, you know, and there, there's terms and stuff. But since this is loan money, there is no taxes on it. Uh, the way that I'm going to run this company is it's going to have, it's, gonna, it's, it's probably going to pay any taxes legally because of the appreciation factor of real estate. And this is big boy money games. This is what the people with money do. This is why Donald Trump doesn't want to show his taxes. Because Donald Trump has so much property that has been depreciated. Because like, let's say you have property and it depreciates to $500,000. That means you can go out and make $500,000 and pay no taxes on that money. Because you got those depreciation values of 500000 This guy has depreciation values of several millions, millions of dollars. And if people, because, you know, it was funny. It was Blue Collar America that put him in office. And they're like, Donald ain't paying his taxes. Yeah, that, 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 that's going to go over very well. So this is one of the, this is just one of the little games you could play. And this is why I urge you to get your company started, to get you some stuff going on and to really make some money. Because a lot of people, they're like, they don't want to do it correctly. They want to keep half stepping, playing around and doing certain things. And once you begin to participate in this, whoa, Nelly, the things that will happen in your life, the things that you can be able to do, the things you can be able to pull off. Because um, this weekend, I was sitting back watching football. I didn't really, I didn't work. I'm going to start taking weekends off. And... This plan just came to me because of all of the data points I have in my head. It's like, well, you know, you can go ahead and take those excess profits and move them over here into a sheltered environment and get your money to work. Because, see, you know, everyone talk about making your money work. Your money can work for you. Your money can work in your uh, financial ecosystem. But you got to create that ecosystem. So I could charge myself three to four percent interest. I could charge myself temp- I could charge myself whatever I want. There's so many ways to do this. Engineer Life Skills, thanks for the fifty dollars super chat. Appreciate you, Uncle G. I'm so glad you're covering this. I'm fighting with my bank about doing simple big boy moves. I keep hearing, I never hear the scene this before. Typically, when you're dealing with, because this is what happens with banks, and I've, I've been noticing this with my banks. Typically, the people move every two years. Because if you go to a branch, and if you just know this, within two years, everybody would be in there and new. So you're dealing with a lot of new people who have never seen anything, and once again, they have different people who handle different accounts. Like if IBM came in and said, hey, we want to set up an account, there would not be anybody in a low-level branch that would do it. It would be someone with corporate experience, a lot of experience, who've seen these moves. So you're dealing with a lot of low-level employees who've never seen this, and they'd be like, what? Because uh, when I set up this account, I explained to the banker what I was going to do. And we had a conversation about real estate. And, you know, he and his wife were thinking about buying this additional property up there. So, you know, 
Rael, that's it. Make money your slave. Don't be a slave to money. Make money your slave. Make your money work. You want your money to be sweating. You want Benjamin Franklin. You want you want you want Benjamin Franklin to be on the workout program. You, you want your Benjamin your your dollars to be buff. You know you want your dollars to be swole up. Well, because one of the things is engineering life skills is that many people in the traditional banking community have no clue to how powerful the internet has become. Because like the thing that Jeff Bezos doing, the thing that Google's doing, the thing that Apple's doing, if you're willing, you know, if you got, because I mean, it could cost you a few hundred thousand dollars to set up that. So if you're not making billions upon millions, it makes no sense. But there's similar moves you can make at your level. Like this one. Um, I, I can tell you straight up right now. Disruptive asset holdings is only going to pay property taxes. Because they're going to own the property, and if they don't pay taxes, they'll take it. They'll be selling my stuff on the courthouse steps. So that's the only thing I'm, those are the only taxes I'm paying for many, many years. Property taxes, that's it. Because essentially, what I'm doing is taking money out of Mac Daddy Media, moving it over to Disrupted Holdings, parking that money in real estate assets that are paying undiluted ca cash flow. Because uh, the one house, if I can get it for 185 and I can put a renter in there for 2000 I'm getting 10% on my money. That's good. That's great. And what's going to happen is, as that property goes up and I increase rates, my percentage that my money is working my money is automatically starting to work harder. And therefore, it's making me more money. Uh, I'm getting the blueprint together and they're like, huh? In my Scooby. They ain't used to regular folks coming in and doing this. Because typically, there's only one person in the bank who can open up business accounts. And depending upon their level of seasoning, there's a lot of stuff. If they're young, they just haven't seen certain things. Just having the parent company own the child company freak them out. That is crazy. But they don't expect that out of you. They expect that out of IBM. They expect that out of Google. But they don't expect that out of you. Royal, telling people brick and mortar was outdated, but people using brick and mortar to lower their tax thresholds allowed them to keep more money to expand the business. Pretty much. Black Caesars. Uncle G, if you don't have an astronomical amount of cash, you can acquire business credit with business credit products which you utilize to get your feet in real estate wet. I would not use business credit. I have a little business credit for this business, but I haven't really spent a lot of time building it because I've been mostly cash and carry. Here's the problem with business credit products for real estate. You can only get so much. So let's say you got $150,000 business credit that you can convert to cash. Once you spend that, you got to pay that back. See, that that's the big hiccup to business credit. You know, if you don't have high cash flow to give you the real ability to repay, let's say you, you, you have 150000 that you get out, and then you, you, you time it all correctly where you've got like 30 or the 60 days before you have to start paying this money back. You could possibly get a flip done during that time. Possibly. But you're going to take three to seven flips before you have enough cash flow where you don't have to lean so heavily on business credit. You're going to have to leave all the money in the company 
um, it's going to be interesting. So I would not use business credit products for real estate unless I had a business credit line of two to five million dollars. If I had like you know one hundred and fifty, two hundred thousand dollars, I wouldn't. I wouldn't use it because one of the things is that once you start using that, you let your companies that you have these business credit products with know that you're using it, and they can freak out a little bit. Because what they'll do is they'll go to your credit report and see what your other utilization is. And if you go past their internal um, barometers, they're going to cut your credit limit style. They're going to cut you off. So that's another one. Yes, cash flow, I see profits, borrowing with no cash flow. It's a very dangerous game. And this is why I really pull back on the business credit thing because I know most of the people who were like, Give me business credit. Give me business credit. You need to learn how to sell first. You need to learn how to get cash flow coming. That's what that should be your first job. Getting your cash flow up. That that's got to be it. Because like and I know, you know, $76,500 seems like an astronomical amount of cash. It really ain't. I know people who buy $500,000 houses like it ain't nothing, then rehab them and flip them for a million. And after sitting on them for a few months. And see, I'm going to work my way up to that, that level. And one of the things I gotta, that's kept me out of trouble is I keep my debt levels very low to non-existent. So this gives me the ability to move. Because like, let's go ahead. I get this house. I can go to the bank and like, look, I got a deed here. The house appraised at 230. I want to borrow 150. They'll be like, all right. So if you know, if I need to get some cash, I could. But definitely not going to be there. But one of the things you can do with the big boy money games is set up two to three companies and two to three company, you know, two to three holding companies and then two to three operating companies. But once again, this makes no sense to do unless you have cash flow. You got money coming in. It don't make any sense just to go ahead and set all this up as shell corporations unless you plan on trying to sell them to somebody years down the road. But it's all about cash flow. And this is why resale is a really good business for people with no experience because you can get yourself some cash flow. Cash flow is essential because this is what gives you the ability to make these big boy money moves. And also it, it becomes necessary because someone asked me about a Roth IRA and I, I heard someone that said, that you could f put in millions of dollars in a self-directed IRA, which I knew to be untrue because you can only contribute X amount per year on a tax-deferred basis. And that's the beauty of them. There's tax-deferred basis. So as a person who was making a lot of money, the RA, the 401k, and all this other stuff, this is going to really start to look like garbage to you because, let me see, like my plan is like if I can get this property where it cash flows at 2000 a month, it sticks to where, you know, I'm getting 10% off my money, which is great, and I duplicate that 10 more times, that is a better retirement investment strategy for me than throwing money in a 401k or a Roth IRA because this house insure this house so if it burned down to some get a big check from the insurance company go out and buy another one wash rinse and repeat so th this is one of the reasons that I I've got to do this because essentially what I'm going to do is park this current cash flow into these houses 
and get the money back out these houses through rent and Airbnb over a period of time. And until that, you know, because regardless of whatever I pay for the house, the house is going to appreciate. So let's say 10 years down the road, I bought the house at 185. Now it's selling for 295. So I, I've gained a hundred thousand dollars in equity, which contributes to my net worth and multiply that times 10. We got $3 million worth of property, three to $4 million worth of property that's cash flowing. So it's appreciating, but it's also depreciating because I get to write down a lot of stuff. I get to write off a lot of things. You got to have multiple shell corporations after crossing mid six figures at a minimum just to spread liability. Yeah, because see, once you get to, because you know, at I think after 94,000, they don't take out in Social Security anymore. Um, once you get to a certain level, 401ks, they don't really work for you. Roth IRAs, IRA, they, they don't really work. If you had them while you were poor and you got them funded, oh, well and good. But once you start rolling, it, it, it stuff doesn't it, it, it doesn't help you. It just doesn't really help you the way that you people would think, because this is why you never you, you know, I used to talk about a Roth IRA. Which I had. But going forward, that's not going to really help me. Now, I can do a self-employment pension, a SEP, which I can shelter 25 percent. However, I like this real estate model because of the cash flow and because of the depreciation. I see profits. It's a long game trying to rush the process. Borrowing is a newbie mistake. You got a lot of people in trouble in 2008. Pretty much. Because a lot of people got over leveraged. And I, I've had many people sit me down. And it's like, Glendon, don't pay cash for one house. Take your cash, split it up times five, go out and get these five loans. And I'm just sitting there like, but when you do the math, the equity position and the cash flow is essentially the same. It's not a big difference. All right, Lauren, correct. After 94K, they stopped taking Social Security out. So, you know, the wealthier you become, that a lot of this stuff isn't, is, is set up to make you wealthy very slowly. You know, you hear them talking about like Dave Ramsey, you know, at 25, 26, um, you start and 30 and 40 years and you're a millionaire at 65. I like becoming a millionaire when I was 40 something. Still had all my teeth, still was spry, could still come two or three times a night. It's a lot of fun. But you got a million dollars, you 65, you 70 years old, you can have fun with that money. You can still get you a nice Porsche, get you a nice house. But I'm telling you, man, it felt much nicer to get there in my 40s than in my 60s. And this is one of the things that happens when you start a business is you accelerate the wealth curve. You really push on it because I was listening to Dave Ramsey and I listened to it because it's a very interesting demographic that listened to him. I've heard several people like, oh, we do one hundred and twenty thousand a year. Oh, between me and my husband, we do two seventy five. These are not broke people. These are people who, who don't have a fundamental financial education, but they're not broke. And I'm just sitting there listening to them, and it, it's amazing. So, you know, you got to, once you start making a certain amount of money as a business owner, you got to take your retirement strategy into your own hands. And like, you know, this 10 year plan that I have, I'm going to come out of it with 20 to 30 houses. 
So I'll be 62. And um, that's what, you know, that, that's, that's the projection. Because I may get into multifamily after I get 10 houses. I don't know yet. Correct. Check out the tax record. Government starts going in raw at about 315. Lauren Hazel, after you make a certain amount of money from business to what you pay yourself, those financial tools don't work. You got to do things very different. I mean, you, you got you to gotta come at it a totally different way because, like, you, you haven't heard me talk about the 401k, RA, stock markets. Because that's my re that's my current reality. That stuff doesn't work for me because I make too much money. You know, third world problems, I get it. You know, first world problems, I, I get it. No one's going no one's gonna cry. No one's gonna bring out the little violin for G. I totally get it. But from a personal situation, it's a problem because I'm gonna tell you something. Getting rich is fun. You got many people out there, more money, more problems. Um, I, I, would, I wouldn't call them problems. I would call them things to be tackled, like this retirement conundrum. So get myself 20, 30 houses, cash flow on every month, going up in equity every month. That's my retirement. Ben the bartender, right? They don't be broke. They just make broke choices. And this is one of the things. Because listen to Dave Ramsey's show. I hear all of these people who have no concept what to do with money. They have no concept. Like, once again, you know, if you, you have a certain kind of car, you got a car note of $550 a month. And you're making the American average salary of thirty two k. That's seven grand out of your money per year. That's almost a fourth of your money just for your, your car. My retirement strategy is to reinvest profits for 30 years straight and stay broke. Well, see, I didn't like that one. The whole, you know, because once again, I don't blow all my money, but I live pretty well. If I want some cheese on my Whopper, I get it. If I want, you know, if there's certain things I want, I just go out and get them. So I don't live a broke, you know, lifestyle. And once you get to a certain amount of cash, because, you know, the average person gets to, um, let's say, 20000 a month. Cash flow coming in. It's 240000 a year. That's, that's life-changing for most people. Because it gives you the ability to spend money, live like you want to live, and still have plenty of money to invest and save. So, I mean, that's kind of like the fire strategy. Where they, they live like they broke before and after fire. So that, that is one of the things that happened. Pookie123, I would not use credit cards to invest in real estate. That's something that we had talked about. I would not use credit cards to invest in real estate. I mean, I could tell you how to get the money off the card. What you do is you're going to lose a little money is you find a friend has a PayPal, a Stripe account, or a PayPal, Stripe, or a merchant account. And you go run that card through their account, and they go ahead and once the funds are deposited to their account, they, they write you a check. And that's how you convert that to cash. Do not use your own PayPal account to pull money off your cards. That will catch up with you very quickly and they will shut you down. But once again, I will not use credit cards to fund real estate because most people, the credit limits are just too little 
you know, you got a $6,000 credit limit, $15,000 credit limit. Also, once you start getting maxed out, they look at every month, all of these credit card companies be looking at your credit report. So they all know when you're getting to that, they've got all of these uh, algorithms. So they're going to put your stuff into the computer. And if you're too close to the red zone, snip, 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 and they're going to start cramming down your lap. So that's why we're not using credit cards. Ryle, the goal is to get to a point where you can fund the life type of lifestyle you enjoy for the rest of your life. Whatever the lifestyle is for you. I agree with that. Victoria, when the economy goes for real belly up due to into the synergistic connotation of tariffs, good luck finding consistent tenants that will pay rent versus eating. The winners of capital usually usually uh, own versus rent. I, I don't think that's going to be a problem. I don't think that's going to be a problem because most people are going to pay their rent. Why? Because they like having some place to stay. They're going to pay their rent. They may let their credit cards go, but typically people are going to pay their rent on their car note. I don't care how bad it gets. Well, Trump lives in debt, so. Appliance boot camp. Everyone that I know that got in trouble during the last recession didn't have any money or cash flow. They subscribed to OPM, other people's money, and didn't have a cash buffer. Exactly. Those are the people who got in trouble. They were leveraged up to their eyeballs and they didn't have any additional cash flow. Like Grant Cardone, he didn't lose nothing, but he was positioned correctly with his real estate. Wealthy people will not create an economic system that they can lose money. Find out what the loopholes they use to keep and grow money. And you'll be good. The tax code is the yellow brick road. Like this, this joint of lending money from one of my companies to my other companies and creating an additional write-off for a brand new company. It's pretty interesting. Uh, loopholes galore. I would agree with that. Because see, once you get to a point where you're looking down at the tax code versus you're like looking up at it, you start to see all the cracks, the rivers, the offshoots, the escape hatches. You start to see all of that. So I would agree, loopholes galore in the tax code. But you got to learn how to play the tax game. Which is you got to learn how to make money. Because you can't play the tax game without money. Because, you know, you make it under 100 k and... The, well, even if you're making 100K, you should learn the tax game. Glenn, what would you do with 15 to 20K? Buy a franchise or real estate? If I had 15 to 20K, I would leave it in the bank. Um, my investments money is going to be, because if everything goes correctly, I should be able to buy a property every three months. That's if everything goes correctly. It may not go correctly. Some all kinds of crazy stuff can happen. But I'm going to be investing because I got almost 200K in the bank right now. So that's what I'm going to start off with to go ahead and get into real estate, get a piece of property, get a renter in there and begin my real estate journey. Ryle, the problem with blacks, especially men, is they don't get in the game but complain about the game. Yeah, I've been trying to change that because I get a lot of people who want to fight with me over stuff that I know not to be true. There was this one person in this group that says, regardless of how much money you get, you still just going to be a, a blank. You still going to be treated a certain way. Now, that was such a 
self-defeating loser attitude because I haven't experienced that. I mean, I've experienced nothing but good things since getting money. I've experienced reduced racism. I've experienced very high customer service. I've ex- I'm just, I just don't, um, I don't really feel those. I don't have that loser attitude though. Because once I hate the fact that many of us use the N word towards each other because it's stupid. And you cannot tell these people that that's wrong. They're like, oh, you scared of the white man. I'm like, what does that have to do with me using a term that degrades you? It makes no sense to me. Amazon is facing antitrust lawsuits. They are the king of the tax game. Politicians like Bernie Sanders trying to screw business owners tax hole. You got to look at the landscape. There's the this talk and then there's reality. They're not going to change the tax code that's going to disadvantage Amazon, Google, me, you. Because, see, a lot of people don't know how to play the game. Like, once again, this whole thing of just uh, creating, uh, creating my own economy, lending money from one company to another. There's so many ways you can get around this. Uh, Dragon Scorpio, basically, how should someone invest 15 to 20K? 15 to 20K ain't really enough money to invest. I know that ain't popular to say on the internet because unless you're getting 30% returns, like you get 10% on. 15k that's uh 1500 bucks you get 20 percent. that's 3000 so you get you know you would have to be getting like 30 to 40 percent essentially 15 to 20k put that in the bank or use that to start a business that's what i would do The Vanderbilts? I didn't know. I was unaware that they went broke. Royal Glenn, the same here. They, this ain't the 1950s. They listened too much to the integration generation. Black Seas, Uncle G. I'm trying to gather as much information as possible. Follow the likes of yourself and other seasoned people in real estate. I'm not trying to pay a tremendous amount of loan with a paycheck. Well, I'm going to tell you how I did it. The first thing that I did was start a business. That's the first thing. Start a business that creates excess cash flow and a lot of your normal problems disappear. Like car notes, where you're going to stay and all this other stuff. It, it, that that that's just not going to be an issue. What's up, Kevin? Thanks for the five dollars super chat. Sure, we'll have to do that. This country needs businesses to survive. It was set up for commerce and trade. Either you're an owner or a worker. It's your choice. Pretty much, pretty much. That's where you're going to be. Flip some cars for 15K and grow it. I would say that's a good idea. Pedro, I used to own a boarding house. I, I should do some stories about that. What got me back to real estate was I gotta start, I gotta start investing my cash into safe haven assets, income producing assets, not gold or silver. Even though I have gold, I have a lot of gold. I, I got my gold from the storage auction days. But essentially, it's just a practical, from a standpoint of practicality, you get the income, the cash flow, you get the depreciation for taxes. It's just a win, win, win.
and the less business that you start. You got to be kidding. You going to ask me that question? Research the channel. There's like 20, 200 videos. Watch those. I mean, seriously. Uh, I think, you know, people got to get, get their research hat on. There's a, a lot of ways, there's a lot of businesses that you can start that really, you, there's a lot of businesses you can start for 500 bucks. I started this business for $289. So th there's all types of things you can do. But the first thing is you got to start a business to increase your income potential. That's the first step because, like, I was watching this uh, this real estate video, and this, this dude on here, he, he, he gets deep in the numbers. He says 49% of the people in this country make 32 k and below. If you can get your income to 80 to 120 k you will start to see and feel a difference in your life. I mean, that's where it all starts, getting your income to a higher level, getting your awareness to a higher level. Because, you know, when I, because my first year that I did over 300K, that was 2002. I, it was started off with me selling some furniture for this company that fattened up my bank account. And it was like such a different thing to always have money, regardless how much money I spent, because I was a normal person. I didn't have any voracious appetites. I still had money. Go to the ATM and pull it out. It's still six figures in the bank. I was like, whoa. And that's when I began to realize that you got to make more money. You know, there's these coupons, there's honey. That, that's, that's poor people finance. Once you elevate your, your mental and your understanding that you need to make more money, you need to be over six figures, you will start to see and feel things differently. So... It's, it's about that business, man. It's about increasing your service. It's about helping your fellow man. It's about creating different outcomes. It's very important. Very, very important. Like, let me go ahead and give you the template. The more people that you help, the more money that you will make. The more people that you serve, the more money that you will make. And this is part of a selfish, narcissistic uh, society. Like, give you an example. Someone posted this in the group, and you know, I was debating on one letter to stay. But this chick on Tinder was getting Tinder matches, matching up with folks and selling their information to this service. And she made $10,000 per month doing that. And part of that is whack because, you know, the guy's looking for a date, but she's looking to use them. Well, I told a friend of mine, would you rather spend your time on cutting coupons to save money or researching ways to make more money? Making more money and coupons and manage your money has a place, but making more money will change your life much quicker unless you're an extreme couponer. Because there's some people who are doing some crazy stuff with these extreme couponing methods. 
So you, you got that. But make more money. Start setting up your corporation so you could play these big boy money moves. Because the thing is, you, you, you can't do this with a job. And you can't do this with a business that you're barely making any money. You, you got to be bringing some money in. Because this is rich folks' logics. How do I minimize or reduce my taxes? This is what every rich person who has money, who's been educated in financial, how do I keep most of my money from the government? That's the question. Tax codes got coupons too. That's funny. Because like this is part of my tenure plan is to minimize my taxes because I take this money. I have to pay money on Magdaddy Media stuff. Then I take this money over here and loan it out to this other company. I won't pay taxes. It just depends on how the Airbnb stuff goes. I won't pay taxes on that new business for at least five or six years. All right, just to let people know that a lot of the more popular, more expensive programs now have payment plans. The links below, the art of holding the LLC, uh, the Hustlers LLC, uh, the basic money management course has a six pay. It's $50 for six months. So you get full access to the course and all that stuff is below. Be real. I listened to why every man should have an LLC about three times, but amazing thing happened today. It all finally clicked. I finally understand everything you said, man. You got to understand how the law works. What happens before you get married, before you have kids is very, very important. It's very important. And what a lot of guys do is they kind of look into a relationship. Oh, she's so cute. Oh, her titties are so nice. Oh, she makes my dangling feel good. Next thing you know, they get married. And at that moment, She's fully entitled to half of whatever you have because of that. And it's just madness. Just, just craziness. But, you know, so the Hustlers LLC, the Money Management Course, the Art of Holding, plus some other stuff. Those links are below. Um, I think the highest payment is $99 and the lowest payment is 50 bucks. So once again, Uncle G has got you where you can come in on something economical and still get a lot of bang for your buck. So with that, I will see you guys.